Hey guys, Rob here, and today we are finally here in the garage. We're going to get started on this, our 1992 DSM project. Yes, 1992 DSM. I'm super excited. So what we're going to start off with today is a nice simple project that's way more complicated than it needs to be. And we are going to be replacing the hatch struts because the lift gate doesn't open. And the old hatch struts are actually bent a little bit here. It's all, it's all kinds of messed up. But, you know, after 25 years, those things are eventually going to fail. Um, now, the project, like I said, is a little more complicated than it needs to be. You'll notice that our new hatch struts here don't have the uh, bracket that they're supposed to have and uh, have a different kind of end here. So we're going to get into all of that, and it's going to be super fun. So let's take a look at some of the parts we need. Okay, guys, so here's the tools that we're going to need. We're going to need ourselves a drill. Uh, along with some drill bits, I have a quarter inch here and a three eighths drill bit, uh, a screwdriver, flathead. Now this is my specialty made, bent it all by myself, trim screwdriver, you're going to need one of those. Uh, we're also going to need a socket wrench, you see it's got a Torx bit on it there. Uh, that is a T40 bit, you're going to need one of those. 13 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter wrench, now this is a uh, ratcheting end. So uh, if you don't have a ratcheting end wrench, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but you can still get it done. Uh, I recommend having a ratchet wrench. And our nice little extendable magnet here. Uh, we're working near the trim. Bolts could fall. It could get ugly. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, guys. So first things first to start out our struts. I'm come into the car here. Pop our hatch. And lift up our tailgate. Now, these things are a little bit heavy and these struts are mostly blown and by mostly blown I mean they're completely blown now this is what I'm using to hold the uh, hatch up um, a broomstick a two by four a piece of wood whatever um, now we're gonna be taking this one out first so you always want to put this on the opposite side of where you're working and we got a nice little piece of plastic there and then just make sure that's well that's a little wonky just make sure that's solid and in there it's gonna hold hold the hatch up last thing you want is this falling on your head uh, that would be terrible. Um, okay, so this is going to be pretty simple uh, taking it out of here. Uh, the best thing to do is just go ahead and get back here. Let me get my shop light here. Ah, yes. So here's our strut. Now the bottom bracket is behind this plastic piece here. So I'll be showing you a nice little trick for that. And this is our top bracket here, um, which is a T40 Torx or a 13 millimeter bolt. We're going to be using both for that. And so this should be tons of fun. Go ahead and crawl in here. Uh, uh, always be careful when you're getting in and out of these things or when you're doing any work, these rubber pieces here, they're just as old as the rest of the car is. Uh, they crack, break, and give you all kinds of extra problems. So we're gonna go ahead and start here with our 13 millimeter wrench. And we're just gonna put it on the bolt back here and all I wanna do is break this loose. So that's broken loose. I'm give it an extra turn there. Uh, the Torx bit is going to make it easy to go ahead and take it the rest of the way out. I just don't break it loose with that because if that slips or something, whatever the case may be, uh, that could be just a huge, huge hassle. You don't want to deal with that. So break it loose with a wrench in here with your T40. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put my hand up here at the top here because if this decides to let go, we don't want to be a part of that. So, okay, we can see we're being held up here by our, it's pretty well. So just spin that the last few threads out okay and the fact that this didn't go and spring the rest of the way out is pretty telling of how blown this is um, both of these are bent I don't know oh, I spin it for you you see the see how bent that is uh, now we got to get behind here and there's a couple different things you can do one is you can go ahead and pull all of the plastics out of the back um, that's a lot of work you risk breaking a lot of different clips and plastics and with the car being as old as it is these plastics and things are hard to find they're brittle and a big pain in the butt let's get our shop light up here see a little bit better um so what i'm going to do first things first is we've got this piece here um and it's got a phillips head let's see if you can see that down here we got a phillips head screw here and that's not in there very tight at all it's it's pretty easy to get out 
we just take a Phillips head screwdriver, um, or in my case, I got my little electric screw gun, and pop that out of the way. And give us a little extra play. Don't lose this screw. <laughs> All the Mitsubishi screws and bolts have like these built in washers that don't come off. So, um, you lose those and it's kind of a pain in the butt to replace them and all that. All right, now back behind here, we've got two 10 millimeter bolts and the um, best thing to do is to take my little bent screwdriver, as I like to, or any kind of flathead. We're gonna bend this back just enough so you can see them as best as I can show you guys, hopefully. And that's where our two 10 mils are. So that's where our magnet comes into play because if you drop drop those it's a big pain in the butt and our ratcheting screwdriver or ratcheting wrench rather a ratcheting 10 millimeter um, if i haven't lost it by now uh, will help you guys get those out nice and easy without having to take out all this extra plastic you see these these bend it's a good it's got a nice break in hey guys here. once again sorry for the bad camera angle so this is a plastic piece that i was trying to show you guys and uh so this is why i couldn't feel i was trying to put the camera on my head and it looked good while i was drilling but not so much over here so once you get the screwdriver kind of in, now I've popped all these plastic pieces back. You can bend it back, and then you can see down in there, sort of, kind of, not really. Let's see if we can, a little bit of a better angle. That's where your bolts are, there and there. And you just use your um, ratcheting end wrench. Like I said, if you don't have the ratcheting end wrench, it just becomes a big, bigger deal. And with this piece, uh, well, you can see the top of that piece. With that piece installed, you don't get as much play backwards. That's why I'm having a hard time here. Um, one of the things I was talking about was using this, your, your flathead screwdriver um, or trim tool, whatever you got, to hold that bolt in place while you unscrew it. And same with, with over here, but you have this more of a gap here. Once that's out, this all slides up through this gap, and you use you know the break here. Um, but just be careful when you're doing all that stuff. You don't want to break anything. Okay guys, so once you got the old strut out, it's time to repair it. So you'll see here the end is different. It's got this nut and bolt combination as we you know, looked at when we took it apart. And it's got this bracket here with a ball joint that's actually riveted into the bracket. So we'll be drilling that out and replacing that with uh, just a nice little bolt. Uh, the, the new strut's got a nice little plastic piece on here that'll work just fine. Doesn't necessarily need a ball joint, but as you can see, this thing is, is pretty well bent. And they're blown, like I said, 25 years, and that'll be it. So we're going to take our uh, T40 bit here, and our 13 millimeter wrench here. Let's break this loose. Nice and easy. This unscrews, and that pops right out. And you see that's a, a nice little ball joint. So that will slide, I believe, into this section here. If not, we'll be doing a whole... A lot more modification. Like I said, a more complicated job than it needs to be. So we'll put those together. I got a little magnet up here on the wall. Nice and easy. Um, in the bracket here is where we're going to get into some of the problems. So uh, let's let's get started doing the fun stuff. We our drill here. I'm starting off with a quarter inch bit. And uh, this will be tons of fun. So bear with me. Okay, so we made a little bit of progress there. And to avoid having to drill all the way down, we just basically need to get this top part out. And I think I've made enough of a dent where I can switch to my bigger drill bit and we'll be able to drill the rest of that head off. Uh, it's always better to start, you know, with a smaller bit. And you see it was walking around, so the bigger bit's going to walk even more. Um, if you can't get this one started, start with an even smaller one and just, you know, steady as she goes. It's going to take you a little bit of time. So it's it's an easy job that's more complicated than it needs to be because of older technology it is what it is so we're going to go ahead with our bigger bit okay you see we really are making some good progress there just you're going to want to pause every once in a while just to check to see where you're at obviously i don't want that big of a hole in there uh i just want the rest of that metal removed so we've got oh i don't know probably a sixteenth of an inch left to go so we're just going to keep on drilling nice and so this is going to get nice and warm uh gloves or let's see what we got here just a uh, bit of plier action put a holder in place
those. Pop that out of there. So she's still hot from drilling. <laughs> so we're gonna try not to handle it. Boom. And there you go. Brackets off and we're ready to uh, prep the new strut to go in. We just went ahead and ran the bolt through. Uh, we wanna make sure that this notch here is, is on the bracket side. It's gonna sit in the car like that. It's gonna be underneath the plastic trim. There's plenty of space back there, so don't worry about this. Um, as long as this part of the bolt doesn't come past the bracket, which ours doesn't, it's right there, it's nice and flush, that'll fit in just fine. Now, a problem that we've run into is that this, so, you know, the, the old stroke bolted in right here, the, the bolt held it onto the ball joint, and the new strut here has a ball socket. Um, there's this little mat, metal clip that goes onto the back here. And that just pops right out with a flathead screwdriver, that's not a big deal. The problem I'm having here, though, is that this ball seems to be just a bit too big for that. Now, I ran a drill a little bit in there, um, but I didn't want to go too much. Obviously, that's not a ton of plastic you can really drill into. Um, so I think what we're going to have to do is bust out the grinder and maybe grind this down just a little bit. So, like I said, easy job, more complicated than it needs to be. And if you want to go ahead and spend the extra money, I think at this point it probably would have been worth it, but uh, we're already here, so we're going to get it done. Okay guys, so I've got the grinder out here. Um, if you guys don't have a, one of these angle grinders, they're really, 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 really handy, especially when you run into silly problems like this. Um, keep in mind, you don't got to get super awesome equipment. This is a tool shop brand, got it from Menards, picked it up for 20 bucks on sale. And, you know, Menards always has their 11% rebate, which means I can go back and buy more stuff, which is tons of fun. Um, now, I don't have a stupid bench vise. I've been meaning to get one for years, but I don't have one. So when you run into an issue like this, normally, you know, you put this in the bench vise and you can run this around. Since I don't, uh, we're going to use a pair of pliers. And I'm going to just go ahead and prop up my angle grinder here, kick it on, and we're going to go to it. So make sure you have a good, firm grip. Uh, safety glasses always, guys. Safety first. Here we go. Okay. So that's quite a bit smaller than what it was. So we're almost down to that neck there. If this does not work, we are going to have to come up with a new solution and we'll see where we're at. So, let's go ahead and we'll pop this guy in here. It should fit now. A little tap on the hammer. It looked like it fell in. It did. Haha. -ha. There we go. So now we have our new strut. She's a little tight. She's a lot tight. Let's see. Uh, we'll still spin in the ball joint. It will. Yeah. So, now that she's in there, we'll put our metal clip back on. I should retain the whole darn thing. And we should be good to go. Okay, guys, so we're in the back of the DSM here. And uh, we got our little modified bolt here. Um, so that was tons of fun. Like I said, if you guys don't want to do all that little extra work that I just did, um, from what I understand, it takes some time and effort, but you can find the exact replacements. They're very hard. Those ones were from Rock Auto, of course. As you saw my Rock Auto unboxing video over on the Facebook page live. Um, so, it is what it is. So now to install this back, we're going to go ahead and put our bolt here back in the top. Now I'm leaving that on because you're going to need that little gap there. Um, we're just going to go ahead and take our T40. If you, if you ground down that... that inner part there. Uh, I'm sorry, that sucks. So we're just going to go ahead and tighten that guy in right to about there. And then we'll take our wrench and we'll just give this a little twist and turn. We want to leave as much of a gap here for that metal clip. Um, we'll knock that in and then we'll bolt it in down here and now we'll be good to go. Alright, so when we're putting these back in, um, we're going to want to put the, the bracket in first. Specifically because the garage here, I'm up on jack stands, and I don't have enough room to lift this all the way up. So it's going to be a really pain in the butt if I knock it in here first, and then try and push this back and get the bolts in. Uh, I'm going to go and get the bolts in. Actually, this will go that way. The gap will be facing down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the bolts in, and then this will be easier. We'll push this down, 
and knock her in place. It'll be much easier to do it that way. Uh, this spins, you know, you don't have to worry about these lining up exactly perfect until you get them in. Um, or always remember to have your magnet on hand. We're going behind the trim again. Um, we're going to bend this back, slide this in, get the bolts in, um, and yeah, we'll see how we do. Cool. So now you'll see we don't quite line up. Like I said, I don't have enough space in the garage to really lift this up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lean on this strut, and it's just going to come in. It's right in the place here. Now I'm going to keep pressure on it. Use my uh, soft hammer. She's in. She's solid. Our metal clip goes in. Slide it in from the top. Like I said, it's going to be kind of hard to show you guys this part. Uh, exactly how it goes in at the top there. So, earlier. Woo! How's camera life up there? Uh, I've never done this with a camera on my head before. It's interesting. There we go. Yeah, that's another job for our screwdriver. In the place. There we go. Come on now. She's on and in. And that is how that's done. Go ahead and push our plastics back into place here. And that's that. We'll go ahead and put our oh boy, back in place go? here. Those of you who are, this is <coughs> this little guy is for the uh, trunk cover, which uh, nobody ever has. Um, I don't want to say they were an option because it seems like it wouldn't be. They're not on every car, but they just never seem to be there. So once that's in place, our hatch strut is in and done. And we can go ahead, put our plastic back into place. See, these are all kinds of scratched up, and it's you know wear and tear and working on different stuff back here and hauling parts in the car that you shouldn't be hauling parts in but when you have a hatchback it's very easy so that's that we got a nice new strut it's installed it's in place it's good and solid and tight and uh you just do the same to the other side guys that is okay guys so once you finally get them all nice and installed you could remove your broomstick piece of pipe or whatever you used and there she is all nice and new held up by, all by herself she could close down Nice and easy and wonderful and no more at all hold using a broomstick every time you need to open these things, you know what I'm saying? Pop it open. Oh yeah. Oh so nice. Gotta love it. Ta-da! It's beautiful. <laughs> Just do that a couple times, make sure your final installation is nice and good. And that's it, you're done. That's how you install your hatch struts. Well, there you go, guys. That's how we install hatch struts the hardest way possible on a 1992 DSM. So, hey, be sure to like and subscribe to the video, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff, and it's not going to be as boring. Um, but I don't think that that was too very boring because we had to do a whole lot of modifications. So, we got a lot more coming up on the DSM. She's going to be running very soon, and that's going to be awesome. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can make sure that, uh, hey, make sure that you see what the, the, next, the next video, the more the more the project. It's going to be tons of fun. And uh, as always, guys, check us out over on Facebook, uh, live streaming every Monday nights where you can ask us questions, ask me about the DSM, ask me about any of my uh, fun rants or raves. Um, uh, suggestions with videos you'd like to see, leave them in the comment section down below here. Head over there, check us out, talk to us live. Me and Mario will be live every Monday, and that's always tons of fun. Uh, there's an Instagram page for All Terrain Outlaws, and uh, make sure you check that out as well, guys. So, thank you guys for joining me here in the garage. <laughs>